Tyson Fury had to postpone his huge heavyweight unification fight against Alexander Usyk. As you may have heard, last week Fury announced that a bad cut suffered in sparring has delayed the February mega fight. It's now slated for May once Fury's cut has more time to heal. This news has frustrated boxing fans who were eager to see all the belts unified. But now some people, including former champ Carl Froch, are questioning the seriousness and timing of Fury's injury. In a new interview, Carl Froch shared some skepticism about the cut Fury showed on Instagram. Here's what he said. 10 million pounds fine on the line for anyone who pulls out. So, yeah. you know, I'm still at the stage of like, oh, I believe it when I see it, you know, when they've got to get in the ring before it, I believe it's truly going to happen. It's always felt like it's, it just, it was a bit doomed. I'm not so sure the fight will happen in May. To start with, I wasn't so sure about the cut. I wanted to see the cut and I wanted to see him stitched up. After seeing Tyson Fury last night on his Instagram, the cut doesn't look like an acute injury. It looks like an injury that is healing. It is scabbed over, the swelling has gone down, and the bruising looks about a week to 10 days old. What difference that has, I don't know. But have they been sitting on this and waiting for the right time to give the news? So Frog seems to think the cut looks older than it should if Fury just suffered it last week. He wonders if the Fury camp has known about the injury for longer but only just announced it. Hey guys, get up! We um, got a new fight date. Very, very quickly, I suppose that was. Upsetting to a lot of people, but refreshing to a lot of good people. Um, massive shout out to Turkey Al Sheikh, who made this uh, new date possible so quick. Um, massive thank you. Massive respect. Shout out to the Riyadh season. Shout out to Saudi Arabia. Shout out everybody. I'm in such a good mood. There's um, in life sometimes shitty things happen. But you never let it get to you. You always keep moving forward. Look at that bastard right there. Woo! Nice little elbow right in the eye. Nearly cost me the biggest fight in my career. But what can you do? Shit happens and we move on. We keep moving forward. And now we have a new date. Usek's crying his eyes out. Ah! Tyson should retire. Oh, he wants to retire. Oh, no retirement here, motherfucker. You get knocked out. Knock Spark out. These are bold accusations from Frosch and add more drama to this already wild situation. I think Frosch raises fair questions, but we also don't have all the medical facts about Fury's cut. There could be reasonable explanations for the timing and appearance of it. Still, Frosch's comments add fuel to the fire and controversy around this high-profile postponement. While the cut may look suspicious to Frock, the fact is Fury Usyk is now delayed until late May. This gives Fury about three more months for his bad cut to fully heal. The two undefeated heavyweights are eager to throw down and decide undisputed supremacy in the glamour division. But Fury's health comes first, so both guys will have to stay patient. This is a massive letdown for boxing and fans, but ultimately fighter safety is most important. Hopefully by May, the cut drama will be settled and we finally get the heavyweight super fight we've waited years to see. Promoter Eddie Hearn also made very interesting comments on the upcoming Tyson Fury versus Oleksandr Usyk undisputed heavyweight title fight. Even though Hearn used to promote Usyk, he revealed that he actually wants Fury to win when they collide on May 18th in Saudi Arabia. Hearn believes a victory for the Gypsy King over a fighter as skilled as Usyk would fully validate Fury as an all-time great heavyweight champion. Hearn praises Fury's comeback but questions resume. While clarifying he has respect for Fury despite their past back and forths, Hearn did admit he finds Fury's resume a bit questionable up to this point. Here's exactly what Matchroom Boxing's head honcho had to say. I know that we've had our back and forths over the years, but I do have a lot of respect for him. Firstly, for what he did to get back to where he was. I think that was incredible too. I do rate him very highly as a fighter. But some people are a bit weird when they don't want a specific person to win. I want Tyson Fury, a British fighter, to win that fight and go down as a real great. And I'm pleased that he's taking that fight because I've said in interviews before, it was frustrating because that is the fight that will make him a great. So while Hearn clearly respects the incredible comeback Fury made after battling mental health and substance abuse issues, 
He still needs to see more before considering Fury an all-timer. It seems Hearn's main issue is that apart from the monumental upset of Klitschko back in 2015, Fury doesn't have many major names on his recent record. He specifically pointed to the Deontay Wilder trilogy as fights where Fury displayed his talents, but the opponent perhaps wasn't up to the same elite standard. Beating Klitschko was incredible. Beating Wilder, for me, there are still some doubts over Wilder. Considering Wilder was seen as a one-trick pony with just the nuclear right hand, I can understand some skepticism from Hearn over that rivalry truly testing Fury against the best of the best. Outside the Wilder wins and Klitschko, Fury hasn't faced the giant names you expect from an all-time great heavyweight title holder. That's why Hearn sees Usyk as the perfect opponent for Fury to validate his pound-for-pound -pound status. But Hearn believes that if Usyk ends up beating Fury in their highly anticipated fight, it would end all debates around Fury's greatness. While applauding Fury for taking such a dangerous fight, Hearn believes coming out on top against Usyk would cement Fury's legacy beyond any doubt. Beating Usyk for the undisputed that kind of leaves nothing to chance in terms of the debate about him being a great of our generation. So respect to him. It's what boxing needs. Very high praise from a promoter who has no horse in the race, even though Hearn used to work with Usyk. He clearly respects the Ukrainian technician, but wants to see Fury score the victory on the world's biggest stage. And I must agree, beating a slick southpaw with Usyk's amateur and pro pedigree would leave zero doubt about Tyson Fury's greatness. He would have scalps over the boxer and puncher required for ATG recognition on the mantelpiece. Now I must also point out that while I'm sure Hearn truly believes Fury conquering Usyk would seal his legacy, the matchroom boss likely also has the salivating Joshua vs. Fury British mega fight in mind. As Hearn mentioned, Joshua first has an epic showdown lined up with Francis Ngannou in March. The winner of that contest fighting an undisputed Fury for all the marbles would be an enormous event in UK boxing history. So while I think Hearn is being genuine wanting fellow English fighter Fury to succeed against Usyk, he also knows that victory could lead to a Joshua Fury super fight for all the gold later in 2024. The final piece of analysis around these interesting Hearn comments is, who does he and who do you think will actually win between Fury and Usyk on May 18th? Bookies have installed the bigger man Fury as a moderate betting favorite. His physicality, underrated boxing skills, and nasty punch power likely give him the edge against the sprinkle-throwing technician from Ukraine. But as we know, Usyk is an absolute master at dictating range and cadence using lateral movement and accurate combinations. He may not have the one-punch KO pop, but could outwork and frustrate Fury over the 12-round title tilt. For me, I'm leaning toward Fury if I had to pick, but it's incredibly close to call. Usyk has all the technical and amateur pedigree advantages, but Fury might be a bridge too far in size and uncanny boxing IQ. This unique clash of styles is truly a 50-50 pick'em in my book, but you could make strong cases for either generational talent ending the night undefeated and undisputed. That's it for today from my side. Do you think there's any truth to Frotch's suspicions on the appearance and timing of the injury? Or is he making accusations without knowing all the facts? Also, let me know who you are picking and why when these top pound-for-pound -pound monsters throw down for all the marbles on May 18th. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.